Hey, what's going on? This is Bruce with Bowski Studio out for another planar adventure. And today's little escapade is going to be here at uh, Owl's Head, Maine. We're going to a beach uh, right next to the lighthouse. Probably going to use a limited palette. I'm not sure yet. I got more colors. I got about a seven color, I think, palette right now. Tubes in the in my box, but we'll see what I use when I get there. What I decide to paint. Hoping for a little surf action because we have some rain coming in later today. So we got some cloud activity that should be interesting to paint. And I think it's going to be super windy on the beach. So I'm worried about the audio a bit. So I'll try to do some protected areas where you can hear me talk. But we'll just have to wait and see. So see you at the beach. Okay, we're approaching the access to the beach here. And a little picnic table right there handy. Kind of beautiful spot. I've painted here before way long ago. Not too long, maybe a year and a half. But here's the beach, sun's out. Should be pretty awesome. Okay, I'm all set up for a painting. I'm gonna be doing an eight by 10 panel today. And as you can see behind me, it's just a pretty awesome day. Even though I think probably another three, probably three, four hours we're gonna be getting rain. But what I'm gonna be working on today is an eight by 10 uh, oil ground panel. I really like that surface for painting. And we'll go over the palette momentarily, but first I'm gonna be painting this scene in here. You can see the distant hill in the background kind of nice and then as it tapers off into the distance and that comes around and you got the bigger rock that is overlapped by this foreground rock and then comes along the shore here so that'll be a nice lead-in for the uh, composition Okay, so I got the uh, palette set up. There's a couple colors on here, the orange and the green that I won't be using. That's from another painting. I'm going for a limited palette today. We're gonna be using the Griffin Alkid uh, Quick Dry uh, Titanium White. It's a ultramarine blue. And the yellow is Utrecht Hansa Yellow Lights. And then Quinacridone Magenta is what we're gonna be using today. Okay, I'm just going to like uh, kill the white here with a little bit of ultramarine blue. And I'm going for, uh, I've done this before in other videos, rather than do a very careful drawing in the very beginning, I'm going to go for more mass tones of where the general objects are in the painting, and then uh, define them more as I go along. Okay, so I uh, did a preliminary tone of blue over the whole panel to kill the white, because if I'm in sunlight and I don't have my umbrella, it's a little windy anyway, even if I had it. What I'm going to do now is, with the same ultramarine blue, a little uh, denser, without it washed down with too much turpentine. I'm going to now start massing in the areas where the shore will be, and the rocks, and the distant horizon, which uh, I'm going to do at a higher point. Okay, I got a very generic placement of where I want my shapes, the main uh, elements in the painting. And now I'm going to uh, start massing in with some generic tones for the water, sky, rocks, and then start detailing out. Right now I'm using a little turpentine in the mix just to get a wash in there sort of. And then I'm gonna to switch to some liquid impasto gel, which I am gonna to add to the palette to mix with the colors. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm putting in the mid-tone of the sky that I can then go back and forth with darker tones or lighter tones to uh, suggest the different uh, variations and dimension of the clouds and such with a little ultramarine blue and the quinacridone magenta and just a touch of yellow. Kind of making a, uh, trying to get a little bit of a vibrant gray. Okay, so I'm just trying to get some base tones of some generic color in the water, sky, and so on. So I have like I was mentioning before, now once I get the uh, color of the water in around the rock, then that'll let me key in the 
orangey, rusty, brown tones in the rock. Try to get a good average. Try to hit it about 70%, and then I'll come back and nuance everything. But this is the way I like to try to work. Limited palette, really uh, massing in the tones to look for speed. How fast can I get something painted if I needed to? Okay, so now i am got the water base tone in and sky base tone. Now I'm going to get the distant hills with the mixture of the uh, yellow, red, and blue, mostly blue, and with the mixture of uh, yellow and red in there, trying to modify the bit. And I'm going to add a little more white to that because it's a little strong want it a lighter tone okay now I've done the base tone and I've done a little bit of the darker undersides of the clouds and I'm really just trying to get the value somewhat close and then just plant some strokes and I'll finesse with a softer brush later if I need to in certain areas but I'm really going to try to control the blending if you will with the edges of the brush and the proper value shift in color and I think that'll work pretty good. And there's some stronger pops of uh, bright blue sky coming out because we've got the storm clouds coming in. So I think I want to pick up on some of that even though it wasn't there originally. So you have to be flexible when you're playing air painting that find something that's going to tie in with your idea of the painting. Don't chase the light too much, but in this case, I just want a little pop of pure, more pure blue. Just getting some ultramarine blue with a little bit of white. Trying to get some purity here. And just in some areas. I'll feather it in in a moment. Turning the brush a little bit. Yeah, that's a nice effect. I like that. Okay, I'm getting ready to do some uh, point of view shooting and stuff. And uh, actually the sand fleas or mosquito, they look more like little horse flies too, are chewing me up. I didn't bring any off, which I should always have that this time of year. Probably just having to pack anyway, but so let's get to some painting with a little point of view. I'm going to put this on the chest and have some fun for a few minutes. I'm just going to be working on the tone for the shore there. Try to get a something going on here. Like a little yellow magenta. Ultramarine blue. A little more ultramarine blue. Trying to mix up some uh, threads of color here. And let's see what we get for... I'm not just filling in. I want to dance around a bit. Almost like an impressionist kind of painting. And honestly, I don't even know if I'm going to finish this. We are getting chewed up to death here. We'll see. Mix in some more whites. A little more yellow. A little impasto. Medium liquid impasto gel. See that? Slightly different color. And just laying it on there. Suggesting through my grayed down color threads. The overall tones look okay, pretty much. Horizon might need some straightening. Looks just slightly crooked. Okay, going to steal some of that beach color, that rocky shore. A little bit more yellow into it, stealing some of the red tone. Get some rocks in here. Try and do more planes of the rocks. They're not super defined, so I'm kind of stealing a bit to make them more angular.
So I'm just going to try to get some uh, more layers of the water in here. Well, hate to report, but I give up. I am getting chewed to death by the bugs here, the little sand flies. But what we're gonna do is take this home, finish it up from memory, which I can't remember last time I've done that. So that'll be a good lesson for today. How to paint, how to finish a plain air sketch from memory. Okay, so this is what I got after this session. I just, I, I just can't do any more out here with the bugs and everything. So like I said, we're gonna finish up from memory and uh, show you how I might uh, do that. So I'm headed back to the cars, so we'll continue the video and show you how I finished up the painting. See you in a bit. Okay everybody, we're back at the uh, campground and we're going to continue with the painting and try to finish up from memory. Now something that is a little unusual for me is I don't normally do this, number one. Number two is I'm using a fast drying white, an alkyd white. And it's been in my box drying for a couple hours because we stopped painting, went and had lunch and so on. So I'm not sure how the paint's going to glide on there now because it's not really super wet and wet. But we're going to give it a go and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to start with the uh, water here. And I'm using the liquid impasto gel. Mimic getting that same color with the ultramarine blue. Hansa yellow light from Utrecht. And just a touch of this magenta, quinacridone magenta. Very strong color, you don't need much. I am mixing a little bit of terps into the liquid impasto gel. Just to try to get a little fluidity to uh, anticipate going over this semi-tacky layer from earlier. And as I cut around the rock, that'll pop that forward a bit. I'm trying to create some jagged edges a bit. Try and just give it a suggestion of movement in the water. So just uh, getting some color in the water. Then I'll mix a little of this yellow and get that greenish blue. Let it intermix on the panel. You, you notice on my palette I'm not pre-mixing any piles of color. Just kind of going wet and wet with getting the, the uh, tone color that I want on the panel. Trying to add variety to the paint strokes a little bit. And back in the distance, we don't want the stroke, you won't see the different strokes. Now, you want to be careful to not have your strokes in the foreground be the same length or size as, as the background because the plane of water is receding away from you and it'll just start grouping together and just become bands of color. So, you want to be careful of that. And I'm going back over those dark spots with just a little lighter tone to integrate them into the suggestion of many, many pebbles on the beach. And then I'll put in my final writer notes, just a few. Just creating an orange with the magenta and the yellow. Lightening it with white. Just to get some highlights on the rock. And it's, what's kind of nice about it tacking up a little bit now is I can now scumble by lightly to create the texture in the face of the rock without actually getting in with a small tiny brush. So that's useful. Okay, so we thought this was gonna be a great idea finishing the video at this little location, as you see behind us. Very relaxing, but no light. So it's time to go to the camp. Okay, as you can see, we're in a little different location. Uh, I had to come back to the cabin like I was uh, mentioning 
previously the light was uh, really getting poor over there and it's not perfect right now either but I'm trying to do this the day of when I did the painting earlier so that it's fresh in my mind so I'm gonna just create a, a dark tone for the shadow on the rock don't want to try to make it too there is a strong contrast So already we're getting a little dimension going on to show light coming in from our left. And I'm going to try to just bring out a few shadow lines in the foreground rock. Now what's difficult about situations like this when you're out in real life, unless you have strong light, super strong and flatter planes, all these facets of light, there's a lot of similarity between everything. you got to pull out different elements and just make it work. I'm going to push some dark crevice type items in the rocks here. And I've heightened some contrast on the beach using some white and yellow to separate the two. One little light plane or two. It can help define Okay, what I'm going to work on now is I'm going to work on defining some uh, more colors into this rock and work on the clouds and then uh, we're going to tie it up here. Okay, everybody, I'm going to wrap up this uh, painting session here. And so uh, it was a true challenge today with uh, dealing with all the bugs and then going to different locations trying to finish up this video. But believe it or not, I'm kind of pretty happy with it considering I didn't use any reference material after the fact once I get back to camp here. I just try to remember the feel of the day and that sort of thing. And it's obviously not something that I see myself continuing to do for long period of time or anything like that but it was fun to experiment uh plein air paintings not always about trying to get out there and that's the only thing i do i'm going to create finished paintings it's a, a lot of time for me it's playtime, and it's time to just have some fun outdoors and all that good stuff and uh as always thank you so much for uh hanging out with me and uh watching the videos if you're new to the channel thank you for watching i invite you to uh, subscribe and be sure to hit that bell notification icon to be alerted as to when I post new videos. And uh, feel free to check me out on uh, Facebook at Abowski Studio and Instagram, Abowski Studio. You'll see stuff there you won't see on my YouTube channel. So, and if you like the video, like I said, uh, please hit that like button and share it with your artist friends. Get some traction and uh, get it out there in the world. Thanks for watching. Bye.